Welcome y bienvenidos to this episode of the Cultural Capacity Podcast. I am one of your hostesses here and your guide for this episode, Justine Gonzalez. You will notice that myself and my colleagues here at Educator Aid, we call ourselves um, guides, facilitators, or hosts, because we are simply here to support you on your journey of personal development and also for professional learning purposes. So we don't believe it's just one or the other. We believe that what we do should be very efficient and we should be able to apply it across all the different parts of our lives. So let's hop into it. I have something really fun to start with and it actually stemmed from a conversation that I was having with my longtime partner Thaddeus earlier today. Um, on the day that I'm recording this. And we were just talking about, we both really love analyzing different TV shows. Um, if you want, and you're watching this on YouTube, drop in the comments, some of your go-to uh, bingeable TV shows where you really enjoy analyzing the characters. It has to do with what we're talking about today. Actually, our most listened to episode right here on the Cultural Capacity Podcast is all about the process communication model, which was established about 40 years ago, but developed off of a therapeutic model from Dr. Eric Burns' work on transactional analysis theory. So you're going to get more information and goodies from me, especially if you check out the notes of this show. If you're listening on podcasts, again, if you feel led, feel free to share, but also hit subscribe. Give us a great review if you're having a great learning experience. That really helps us to continue to elevate the content that we're producing and give you more of what you desire. So make sure you always interact with the quizzes, the resources, the things that we are offering you because we want to know if we are being supportive and relevant to your learning needs as well. So let's hop into it. Let me pull this up and share my screen. Once again, you can click on the link in the show notes if you're listening on a podcast um, platform such as Apple, Spotify, Google, Audible, Amazon Prime. We're on all the podcast streams. Um, And you can view this because obviously if you're listening, you won't see this. But currently I'm sharing my screen. And I said, what if we created mood boards of our the energies of our celebrity personalities. Now, of course, I I wanted to do a little bit more and I wanted to also these are also women I admire for their confidence, their personality, their skills in their craft of acting, comedic performances, modeling. Um anyway, so you you get the idea if you're listening only, you probably want to come to YouTube and see the different pictures, but I will detail who they are. I will reveal Um, the answers to who they are. So you can also see on here right now while I'm screen sharing, if you're viewing this on YouTube, feel free to take a shot of this QR code and you can actually take a quiz that we just released called the energy of your personality, unlocking the energy of your personality. It helps you to start to reflect more on your tendencies in both your personal and professional environments, just a quick five question quiz. And then we're gonna also send you another little goodie, uh, a little follow-up note from me and our team over at Educator Aid. We are not in the business of spam. We do not have time for that. In fact, it's a whole communication conundrum. Maybe I should do another episode about of the overwhelm of email. And how are we gonna solve these issues? Cause it's not a client that I've worked with across any sector where that hasn't been a complaint. Okay, let's get back on fact, on focus and on track. Um, you can see here, there's four different images. Again, it was just a quick mood board template that I created in Canva. If you've never used it, it's a wonderful design tool for presentations, documents, et cetera. So in the upper left, we have Miss Ashley Graham, incredible model, but also just a personality, um, very devoted to her craft and women's empowerment. Um, uh, Then in the upper right, you see Chelsea Peretti. She was, um, one of her breakthrough roles was on Brooklyn Nine-Nine, which was a long running sitcom. If you've ever seen it, great show on just intercultural communication, as well as multi-generations represented. Um, I actually love Brooklyn Nine-Nine for those reasons. I also love, uh, I forget who the main leads are, but there's a lot of different actors I love in it, but you see Chelsea Peretti. Then in the bottom left, you see Zoe Deschanel, who was the star of New Girl, which was also a very popular show highlighting um, some very different personalities. You're, you're going to start to see a theme here. When we talk about personality, there's often very common archetypes 
that you see in a lot of shows um, of the different types of personalities or the energies of personality. So um, that definitely resonates with me, her role, because she rises up the ranks of being a teacher and then an assistant principal. And it's, it's also fun. And I relate to a lot of that with my nerdy research side. And then in the bottom right, you see Dasha Polanco. She is um, one of the beautiful actresses who had a breakthrough role in Orange is the New Black and also somebody I look up to and admire as a fellow Latina. Okay, so you see my mood board. Um, again, you can take our little quick quiz if you're interested in that type of thing. But why did I want to show this? I wanted to start with something fun and lighthearted in our podcast, but... I will also stop my screen share here. Well, no, I'll reveal it at the end. So stay tuned. We also did a mood board for my longtime partner of 10 years, Thaddeus. So I will show his at the end. And on that, there's a QR code where if you want to download this Canva template, template and share on your social media, we would love to see you do that. Just make sure you tag at educator aid on Facebook, Instagram. If you do it here on YouTube, you can also tag us. Um, but yeah, uh, we would love to see what you come up with. I personally would love to see what some of my friends and colleagues come up with. So feel free to use this template to, to exude your own of the celebrity personalities and the energies. So let's get into the learning though. So going back to, um, if you see me looking down, I'm looking at some notes that I took. I wanted us to talk a little bit in this episode about how do I be more responsive and responsible in my communication? Now, when I say responsive, I'm not talking about frequency. I am talking about how am I responding to the information somebody's giving me. Communication only happens when the message that we are sending or intending to send is received by the person in the ways that we intended it to be received. Now, this gets very, very muddy when you throw into the mix unregulated emotions and we are all constantly going in and out of distress every single day. Distress is a continuum. So distress might be, oh, a piece of hair fell out of my hair. Oh, I have a hangnail on my pinky. That's a level of distress. Just like one of the tires of my car fell off while I'm driving. That's also a level of distress, right? Death, that we can have this huge spectrum, just like you see in trauma. And there, there shouldn't be judgment about it, but we all have a different capacity for knowing how to regulate ourselves and the nervous system responses our body is literally going through when we encountered prolonged states of stress. That is what distress means, prolonged states of stress. Now, I know this is very common in the workplace, especially. However, the more that we become aware of our personality patterns and the behaviors associated with those, the better we can regulate ourselves, the more we can understand our motivations, the more we can understand how to resolve conflict more effectively based on our personality. So a little fact you might be interested to know of human design, essentially, is that by the age of eight, our unique personality structure the energies of our unique personality, those are all formulated by the age of eight. So much of it might be environmental, but there's also been a lot of research to show that what is called our base personality, somewhat of consider it our MO or our go-to of how we manage to stress, how we communicate, how we resolve conflict, the ways that we're motivated, our go-to home base, so to speak, that is actually established even earlier. Um, and a lot of that is actually influenced, something I'm passionate about is it is influenced by the mother. Um, I, I have a belief that this is this work of personality. No, it's not just about the research and the neurological and those facts that exist, which are real about who we are. I also very much personally believe in the spiritual component of environment all the way down to our lineages and DNA and the different trials and things that have been present in our families. Some people might refer to this as generational patterns. Um, in uh, often religious circles, you hear the term generational curses. I don't think everything generational. I like to think of things as generational blessings because what we are given to work with is by design. 
And I do believe that as humans, it's our duty and our responsibility during our time on earth to figure out how to work with what we've been given, the beautiful gift that you've been given of yourself and your unique makeup, because nobody can do what you do the way that you do it. Nobody, nobody in the world. You might have people and you might be going, well, that's ridiculous. There's plenty of people who do podcasts or teach even just like you are, Justine. That's right. But they're not Justine Gonzalez. And guess what? In you, what you're doing in your life, there's nobody like you. So it is a devotion practice and it has become over the years a devotion practice for me really since a very, very young age, especially growing up in a home where there was a lot of miscommunication. There was a lot of dysregulated or unregulated emotions and behaviors, miscommunication, especially because I am a third culture kid. My mother's background was heavily Amish Mennonite um, from that lineage. And my father is Puerto Rican. These are very different backgrounds in a lot of ways. So not even just culturally, but that impacts how we communicate too. So there's a lot at play here. Um, If you read the show notes further, if you click and go see the quiz, you'll see a lot more information just about me and also some of the certifications that I hold if you're curious in those sorts of things. But let's talk more about this responsiveness. Um, And one of the things is really how does communication work? Because so many issues in the workplace of teams that I work with, they say communication is awful. And that's all that people are typically able to name, even on in-depth surveys, they often always point back to communication, um, but it seems as though it's pointing a finger. And what I want to help others do, um, just like I work on myself to do, is to better understand themselves. Um, a, a, A saying that we have in my PCM community, the process communication model global community is, you know, you remember kind of this golden rule of treat others how you want to be treated. Well, we say treat others how they want to be treated um, because we all have unique ways of communicating. And sometimes we look at coworkers or even family and go, what's their problem? Why don't they get it? Um, it's because they communicate differently than you. And on top of that, if one of two people in a conversation is in distress, no matter the level, Chances are the message that you're trying to communicate is not going to be received in the way that you intend it to be. Um, I know that's still challenging sometimes for me to wrap my head around like, well, I wrote it down, but what, what more is there to say? And the thing is, there's so much that gets misconstrued. And especially with the fact that we have multiple communication platforms, emails, multiple emails, multiple phone lines for many people. There's all these forms. And for myself, being on the upper end of being a millennial, I grew up in a world where if you couldn't afford an answering machine and you did, you were privileged enough to have a house phone, you, like, if you miss somebody, you missed them. <laughs> you, you, you talk to them or you saw them when you saw them. And so the accessibility is such a beautiful thing in our society right now. My dog's voice has to be a part of the podcast. One moment. All right, we're back. Um, But all that said, it's easy to see why things get miscommunicated. And then sometimes when we don't know how to emotionally regulate, we will go off about an email communication. And it could be that there was no problem on that person's end who sent it. It could be that When you speak with that person, it's a totally different interaction than when you read how they write and how they communicate because you're not seeing body language, which is so much of how we communicate. So all this to say, I want to charge and encourage us to be mindful about going deeper and and taking a first step. So even if you don't engage in the tools that I've linked below, here's what I want to give you a charge about with being more responsive and responsible to understanding how communication actually works is to really set a devotion. And a devotion practice is really being committed to understanding one aspect of yourself. And one thing that I love about the PCM model is it's very different from any of the mainstream, um, even if you've heard of Oh, Myers-Briggs, the 16 personalities, the Enneagram, 
um, even uh, in astrology, the Zodiac, right? All of these things are incredibly helpful steps for you to start to understand your personality or things about yourself. What I will say is the difference that I found from a psychology perspective, as well as a therapeutic perspective with the process communication model, our tool is called PPI, it's personality pattern um, inventory, um, is that number one, it's rooted in a lot of years of research and psychology. Number two, it can be utilized with teams. Um, and number three, and arguably most important, a lot of these other things, and especially like Zodiac, we can't control that. We're born on a certain date, but it's, and, and I find it to be very accurate uh, myself. That's just personal opinion. However, I, it, it can be limiting because people automatically will categorize you similar to the sociopolitical construct of race. Oh, they're this. Oh, they're this. So we tend to do the same thing. I've even heard conversations over the years. Oh, what are you? Are you an ENTJ? Are you an ENTF? Oh, they do this. Oh, are you an, a nine on the Enneagram? Oh, they're like this. And then we've already made a prejudgment or a prejudice. Um, that's what prejudice is. It's making a prejudgment based on only a little bit of knowledge that may or may not be accurate. The model that I'm speaking to and that I'm so passionate about teaching and bringing to the world and making it accessible for the masses because it has traditionally been used to train and coach people at NASA and some other high level um, organizations. I'm passionate about it because it's not just one type that you have in you. You have the energies of all of these floors of your personality structure and we can make the choice when we're aware of it to take our elevator to those different floors and be able to be what's called in channel with the person we're speaking with so that we are being more adaptive um, to their communication style and also able to more effectively get across our messages because we're being relevant to them. So if this sounds like something you're interested in, again, please check out the resources that are linked in our show notes and the description here. Um, but I want to point out two other things really quick. One of the questions, the first is a question that I get often, and I see it show up in these miscommunications, especially in the teams I work with across K-12 school districts, nonprofits, and also corporations, um, is the question, how do I understand and get the world of the person I'm connecting with? If I don't have context, if I don't have a lot of lived experiences that are similar to them culturally, the place that we should begin is understanding our personality and what makes it unique and what happens to us when we go into distress. And one thing that these tools do offer you and what I do in a lot of my coaching of clients is help teach people based on their unique personality, how to have personal and professional action plans to actually bring yourself out of distress more quickly. I myself, um, for many, many years, and this was based on um, a part of my personality structure, and it was really essential for me to understand because I was expending a lot of unnecessary energy oscillating. So I might have a conversation and then I would just really, really internalize it and take, take things personally sometimes that they really had nothing to do with me. And if I would have understood how the person I was speaking with was communicating, I could have saved a lot of time, effort, and energy with going over and over. You know how you replay a conversation and you think, did I say that? What, what did I say? What did I say wrong? Why did they do that? you, it, it helps alleviate so much of that. And it helped give me just so much more knowingness about my own patterns and down to even like, Hey, you probably soothe yourself with food when you're feeling far too many emotions. Oh, it's so accurate. It's scary accurate. And I've also had clients say initially, this is me on paper. And that means all the parts of you, all the things that make you so incredible but also the things that you struggle with. However, all of it can become your superpower because when we accept who we are, then we can change. Then we have the ability to decide if we want to change. Um, and I'm quoting the great uh, Carl Rogers who said, the curious paradox is this. When I accept who I am, then I can change. 
Here's the second thing. We can't accept who we are if we don't know enough about who we are. (laughs) So all that to say, I'm encouraging you and giving you a charge today to really go deeper with this topic of how you connect, how you connect with self, how you connect with others, how you connect it with your career, how you connect with um, a higher power for me, that's God, Yahweh, um, how the universe, however you refer to the almighty and the divine in your life, these are all points of connection. And I also want to say the imaginal and how do I divide, define imaginal? Well, it kind of sounds like an imaginative made up word in my opinion, but it's a real word, <laughs> but imaginal, I first heard it years ago and I made fun of it <laughs> because it sounds made up, but it's a real word. Imaginal to me means though, and I'm looking back at some notes that I took down, visual, your ability to visualize. So visualization, um, the ability to find solitude and find your quiet space and find peace to yourself. The ability to have meditative or contemplative practices as part of your daily routine, your body alignment, your connectedness to earth and mother nature, um, your eco connection. And I consider all that imaginal introspection and imaginal introspection intro is you're going internally to reflect on yourself and really dive into those aspects I just named. But then if we add in that element of imaginal, I kind of have put that all together because sometimes our ability to course correct and identify some mindset patterns that might be harmful to our thinking, that has a lot to do with also identifying biases and also how we view ourselves, how we view others, what we think is possible in our lives. You can see how that's all interconnected, especially when we come to the workplace um, and are charged with different tasks for the role that we have, or we're in our homes and you are in the role of partner, spouse, wife, husband, mother, brother, sister, husband, Father, I've said a couple twice, but you get the drift. We are all constantly having these different identities that make up who we are, but essentially to our core, nothing is more clear about who we are and unlocking motivations, conflict resolution and and identifying conflict, the ability to regulate our emotional and, and feelings, the feelings that transpire then from emotions how we react and respond to those things, how we regulate our nervous system. So we see how mind, body, spirit, we're all interconnected. And so I have found that when I begin working on one, it starts to ignite my devotion and work on the other. The uh, final term that I just want to point out that I utilize a devotion practice once again is choosing one thing that you become Hyper focused on, at least for a time period, and you are devoted to. I am devoted to learning how to be the best version of myself. And by by doing that for many, many years of understanding my cultural origin story as well as my communication styles. Um, so this might have gone a little long for our shorter episodes, which are normally around 15 minutes in length. Once a month, you can always expect a workplace wellness episode from our our former nurse, but now our VP of Marketing and Innovation here at Educator Aid, Kara Gonzalez-Howard. We also have once a month extended episodes where we are sitting here at the virtual table with industry thought leaders, authors, speakers from all different walks of life. Um, We are always interested in acquiring more guests. We have not opened that to the public yet. It's been invite only that may be coming in 2024. So if your interest is peaked and you would love to be a a guest on the Cultural Capacity Extended extended episodes that are featured voices here, um, check some of those out. See if if you like those as well. Um, Come tell us in the comments, interact, ask questions about our guests if you want. Um, And I will leave you with that. Thank you again for showing up for you. We are so glad you're here. And let's continue to get compassionately curious together. Take care.